Scientists set out to study a very special place in the ocean, where two different types of water meet up, forming what is called a front, similar to weather we know on land when cold or warm fronts pass through. Fronts also take place underwater, where the continental shelf meets the much deeper waters of the western North Atlantic. This collision of water masses may be what drives this highly productive area, where plankton and fish abound, making it a prime fishing ground. But with recent changes in the climate and ocean, the fishing community is forced to adapt. With more information, scientists can build models and help us come up with solutions to better manage our interactions with the ocean in a sustainable way. I just wanted to take a few minutes to have a brief science meeting. First of all, to welcome everybody. I think we've got a really exciting couple of weeks ahead of us. So the science problem that brings us all together here has to do, as you know, with the shelf break front. It's long been thought that this shelf break front is a highly productive ecosystem. In fact, there is a lot of fisheries data which shows a concentration of fishing effort along that area. We see higher abundances of whales and dolphins and seabirds indicating that there's something very special taking place at the shelf edge. And there have been long-standing theories about how the currents cause upwelling right at the front, which would bring nutrients into the surface layers and stimulate blooms of plankton. Those plankton blooms have been seen sometimes, but not always. There are some beautiful satellite imagery that shows enhancement of plankton right along the front. Then there's some other satellite imagery that shows no enhancement at all. We've had some seagoing observations that have shown very high abundance, very high biomass right at the front, and other expeditions have shown very little. So we now are faced with the fact that there's essentially sort of two options to explain the observations that we now have. One is that there's top-down control by zooplankton, so when the chlorophyll is produced, it's going to be removed by the creatures that consume phytoplankton, microzooplankton, and on up the works. Or perhaps maybe we've got a sampling issue at hand, and that the spatial and temporal dynamics of the front is such that we're missing it. <laughs> Winch lab, please put the CDD down to 10 meter, one zero. We have a very simplified model for the shell break region. To understand first why the biological productivity could be enhanced by the upward motion of the surface surface nutrient rich water. At the same time, why the chlorophyll concentration is now enhanced in the mean state. The model suggests that it is possible that the upward motion still brings up the nutrient into the surface layer and stimulate the growth of the phytoplankton. But the model says that it is possible the zooplankton, over a slightly longer period, say a week or two weeks, they can graze out the phytoplankton. But the model only tells us it's possible, doesn't tell us it is happening. So we are going out to test this hypothesis. If it's a walker depth, I guess we have to. Surface. There's so much diversity in the plankton. Generally, they're all microscopic, but they vary in size, hundred to a thousand fold difference in size. So like the difference between a blade of grass and an enormous tree. We need to be able to measure that, know which kinds of phytoplankton are dominating at the bottom of the food web. And then the other idea is that they may be growing quite fast, even though there might not be a lot of them there, and maybe there's not a lot of them there because they're being eaten almost as fast as they're growing. So there'll be a team measuring the rates at which grazing on phytoplankton are occurring. Oh, lots of stuff. Look at that. It may explain why oftentimes you'll have very high levels of nutrients such as nitrate and phosphate, the temperature, the sunlight, everything will be just great for phytoplankton and yet you don't get as much phytoplankton being produced as you think you should.
the microscopic animals of the ocean eat the phytoplankton. And that's that first step in moving all that energy that was produced by the photosynthesis up to higher food webs. You can see them swimming. What we're going to be looking at in grazing rates are essentially going to be net grazing rates or growth rates. It depends on whether the phytoplankton increase or decrease, whether it's net growth or net grazing. So that is plankton from the shell. <laughs> it's important to understand the rates that different communities graze phytoplankton because as the ocean's changing, as we have climate change, those communities could change, which could impact how efficiently these phytoplankton can be moved up to the food web. Oh, copepods. <laughs> We're gonna do one experiment a day at the same time in the same place as the primary productivity experiments that Walker Smith is gonna do so that he will be measuring how much new phytoplankton is being made, then we're gonna measure how much phytoplankton is being eaten. I'm not concerned with what are they. I'm concerned with how much, and that gives me an idea about how fast cells are actually growing when you combine it with the productivity information that I do. I'm out here measuring dissolved gases in the surface waters of the ocean. I'm particularly interested in oxygen gas because it is biologically sensitive. So by measuring the concentrations of oxygen, we can understand whether there's net photosynthesis or more photosynthesis happening or net consumption by larger organisms. So those would be the times when there's more grazing than photosynthesis in terms of the effect on oxygen. We'll be measuring in very high resolution with not only our shipboard measurements, but also with the tremendous amount of observations that are coming out of the Ocean Observatory's Pioneer Array, which is an array of moorings and gliders and AUVs that are doing detailed sampling, measuring this highly variable system with resolution that just has never been done before. Ideally, I want to be able to understand with all of the other investigators the controls on phytoplankton growth, the relative importance of physics, the biology. I see a little copepod on this one. And then I want to be able to assimilate all this information to really understand what's going on at the shelf break. The fishermen are seeing change and they want to understand it. At a fundamental level, that's what scientists do too. So we have this really cool shared perspective that once the two sides start talking to each other, we realize that we have a lot of common ground. What is really happening at the shelf break remains a mystery. And with this first expedition, the search for plankton has only begun. Scientists will be back next spring to compare seasons and years and hopefully shed light on this vital layer of the food chain the foundation of all living things in the ocean. <laughs>